So I have the women's version. So the men's version looks like uh, colors, everything's unisex now. So we can't say that something is a women or men's version. And there's been like crazy back and forth online about um, shoes and who deserves to have what shoe. <laughs> And I don't get into those kind of debates and those discussions, but I will lend my voice to it in this way. Um, Foot Locker had to close Lady Foot Locker stores. Now, that banner for Foot Locker had been open for a very long time, and I'm moving the box in front of the shoe. That's because it has a QC stamp, while the Barely Rose did not have a QC stamp. And uh, the Lady Foot Locker stores did not get shopped in the same way that the Foot Locker stores did. So Foot Locker closed Lady Foot Locker down. They did have a second brand called 602, but there aren't that many of the 602 stores. Uh, what do I mean when I say that? I've always stated in research, women are better shoppers than men. So catering to women can leave brands in the difficult position of not getting complete sale through on as many products as possible. Now that's from the data position. Now, what the conversation is with most people in women's shoes is that women should be able to buy the shoes they want uh, without men jumping in and basically grabbing them. But I'm almost positive that that conversation deals more with hype shoes than it does general release models. That's it. I won't talk about that anymore. I will give you the stamp, which is um, it looks like a six at the start, six, two, three, two, 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 three. And then there's a couple of indecipherable, indecipherable numbers. So I'm looking at 22, I'm sure, there. But I think it's going to be 623.22. Now, in order for me to match that up, I go to my size label. And my size label tends to give me uh, everything that I need to sync up and match the information on the QC stamp. And I look at my dates of production for that, but I'm gonna give you the small code, which is VH, which is made in Vietnam. And the dates of production are 02, 23, 22, 2, 05, 06, 22. 05, 06, 22. And I said 623, didn't I? Yep, 623, so that's spot on. That's a month away. So I like to be in the four to five week window. I'm extending that out to two months in regard to authenticating a shoe. And I know a lot of people don't do that. I love the denim on this shoe. I love the Arctic Orange. The only Arctic Orange shoe I remember that did really bad was the Don C. Jordan 2. But this model is really nice. I like the materials on it. People do not like the shape of the shoe because of the 1985, but I like it. So Women's Dunk High 1985 Arctic Orange. Arctic orange is the color. The style code is DV 1143-800. Let's get to the close-up so we can see a little bit more of the details. These will get dirty fast. So if you can't find a way to scotch guard the denim part of it, do so. Because as soon as this thing gets kind of scuffed or hit, it's going to leave a mark on it and the denim is going to get messed up. Because it's so light. Because it's so light. And I want to move this up so I can touch it and talk about the tactile kind of feel of the leather and show you how leather that's coated uh, reacts to a touch test. Now, there's not a whole lot you can gain from that, but it's a pretty cool thing to look at. And I'll basically jump into the close-up now. Shut up, Chris. Get to the close-up. Close-up. So I got the Arctic Orange right here in front of you for the close-up so you guys can see what it looks like. And I'm going to rotate it so you can get a look at it all the way around as if I'm doing 3D. But you know, I'm not doing 3D, it's just me turning it. But I just wanna make sure you get a full kind of look at the upper of the shoe, midsole and everything all at once. And I'm gonna stop it there. You look back here in the back and I have the barely rose back there in the back. But what I want to do is move it up close so you can see the shape of the heel and how it's different from the Nike Dunk High. So you see that shape of the heel. And one of these had, was a little bit distressed which you see is distressed around the edges of the denim. But I wanted to show you the dirt on one of these because of how quickly this thing gets dirty. And that was just from accidentally kind of touching it with, um, what did I have? I had something. Oh, you know what? I had a pen in my hand. And that went on there and now it's, it's just messed up. 
So I had a pen in my hand when I was looking at the shoes to make sure that both sizes were there and things like that before I decided to do the video. But anyway, it gets dirty fast and it picks up stains really quickly. So Scotch Garden. Um, the tactile touch, I want you guys to see what the material looks like when I touch it. And I'm moving this up close so you can see how that wrinkles underneath. And that wrinkle tells you everything you need to know about whether this is coated because you can see bubbles as opposed to just a flex. Now, in certain parts of the shoe, you this is it's been printed to look like leather. And if you look at Anvil Rose, he talks about this a lot. And I think it's something that everybody should kind of look at the Rose Anvil. I said Anvil Rose. Uh, if you look at Rose Anvil, he talks about it a lot. I wanted to start bringing materials up here. When I used to make shoes, I would get an entire batch of materials from China. And they would all have these kind of key marks on them. And they let me know which shoes or which material I was picking. So... I started to learn about leather from that when I was making shoes myself. And I've just kind of, you know, learned a little bit more as I've picked up and moved on. But no Nike Air in these. You don't see Air in them, on them at all. But I do think it's just a fantastic looking shoe for a women's model. And I'm going to end it with that shot. And I'll see you guys on the next one.